A Merkle tree is a binary tree that hashes the data contained in the leaf nodes and rehashes the resulting hashes in their internal parent nodes all the way up to the Merkle root. To clarify the terminology, here is a binary tree. All the dots within that tree represent nodes. The top node is also referred to as the root. Here the bottom ones are leaf nodes. In this case we have four leaf nodes. Then the other nodes are internal nodes. A binary tree has two children at each node. One, two, one, two. All right, let's look at a Merkle tree now. We're gonna keep it small. We're gonna do an example with four leaf nodes. The input to our tree are just these four numbers, one, two, three, four. First thing we have to do, we take the hash of those numbers. Then we're going to combine those hashes, work up in our tree, and then we take the hash again. So we take the hash of the hash of 1, concatenate it with the hash of 2. Same over here. Okay, and then lastly, to build the Merkle root, we're going to combine these two hashes and hash it again. So, how is this tree structure useful? Again, we can construct a tamper-proof block of data. Here we have the data 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we organize them in this tree structure. With the properties of these hashes, by just remembering the Merkle root, we can check for integrity. If this number changes, this hash changes. Then also this hash changes, and then, of course, also the Merkle root this hash changes as well. So whenever something here in our basic data changes, we can right away detect that change here just by looking at the Merkle root. But how is this any better than the linked list structure that we have before? So imagine we had here one, then a hash pointer to that first data block, two, another, hash pointer to three and so on. This data structure also easily lets us check integrity just by looking at this hash to the head. If some data in here changes, we will see the change reflected here in the hash to the head. The big benefit of a Merkle tree is efficiency. Let's imagine you want to verify that one is in this structure. You will have to download all of it, run through the hashes and then verify if the hash here is actually correct. Here, if you have the tree structure given, you only need to download here the hash of two and the hash of the hash of three and the hash of four. Then you're able to recreate here this hash right here and then you simply have to merge these two and then you're able to verify if this structure is actually, actually correct and if one is actually in here. This is a very small example and it might not seem worth it to do all this reorganization of data. I mean we were downloading three data points instead of four in this case, right? It's not that big of a difference. But we had to build all of this tree structure and then also remember those hashes, right? So we needed more space. But imagine if you had a much bigger tree, so you had more branches down here, more and more. If you then wanted to check some data point here on the left hand side, you still just needed this top right hand branch right here. You could forget about all of the data down here. So, in fact, checking integrity in a Merkle tree is possible in big O of log n, compared to big O of n 
in such a chain structure, in a linked list structure. So it can make a big difference. When looking at actual numbers, if you wanted to check a linked list structure by downloading the whole block of data, you'd have to download maybe 500,000 bytes, up to a 1 megabyte, versus just 140 bytes if you wanted to check it with a Merkle tree structure.